Welcome to the very first episode of Refreshingly Honest Conversations with Language Learners. My name is Emily from Language Travel Adoptee. This is the place for all language learners who are interested in hearing stories about the diverse life circumstances, perspectives, and struggles that other language learners go through. I love elevating these stories because we most commonly hear about polyglots who keep on getting younger and younger, learning an absurd amount of languages. We keep on talking about language learning the exact same way. And the fact is, the more that we talk about language learning in the same way, the more that we think, oh, there's only one way to do this thing. And I am bringing you this theory, not only giving voice to our guests, but also reassuring you, yes, there are countless ways to do language learning, even in any life circumstance or struggle. Our very first episode is with Jonathan from the Seabolt Speaks channel. He was the very first language learner that I actually interviewed on my channel like three years back. He has actually broken his arm, unfortunately, and it was a really interesting conversation about how he is keeping up with Mandarin Chinese, how this injury has impacted his language learning and how he is finding ways to adjust along the way. Yeah, hi, uh, my name is Jonathan Seabolt. Currently, I'm studying Mandarin Chinese uh, incredibly intensively. Well, intensively for me, I should say. I'm not just uh, immersing in the content and hoping for fluency. I've been um, learning how to write, which I've found to be incredibly helpful. I enjoy I enjoy talking languages. I've dabbled in a whole lot of stuff. But um, for whatever reason, the past four or five months, Mandarin Chinese has been the just the pinnacle for me. I love it. I, lo I love the language. I'm also on Mandarin Chinese, and I have not even approached the writing and the reading. Mm. <laughs> I'm more of just the listening and speaking at this point, but um, it I, I bet that it is very intense once you get to that point. But Jonathan is definitely one of, I think, the very first person that I had interviewed on my channel, so that's why I wanted to bring him over to us today because we had been discussing this before, but I do want to make it clear about topics that can really hinder or you can kind of think about how if you would want to say hinder or not, right? Or just kind of make you approach language learning in a different way um, or topics that surprisingly affect a lot of what we do in our language learning currently. Jonathan had made a recent video about his arm and we <laughs> are now talking about, we'll go into more um, injuries as well, but I thought it would be a really valuable time, especially since Jonathan is eventually going to heal. We yeah. all hope, <laughs> but I wanted to get him <laughs> while he still had, um, he was going through the healing process because I think he has some really good points about what it means to really pivot your language learning, especially when something like breaking your arm, um, my goodness, really hinders you or some other um, bodily injury that has a timeline, but it's not going to heal automatically. Would you like to kind of describe what you're dealing with with your arm? I, I know it's something that I, it may not affect everybody, which I, I guess is also the kind of the point of what you're doing is for, you know, for people that it may affect. But um, I've struggled with Mandarin uh, for a long time. Um, I was always having trouble because everybody, it's a tonal language and oh my God, let's freak mm -hmm. out about that. Right. But um, so I found a, uh, a system, it's called uh, Mandarin blueprint method and they teach the characters but they teach you how to write the characters but also in a way god it's so hard to explain it's also in a way that teaches you the pronunciation and like the correct lettering the pinion and the tone of the word within the character when you write it and so that was i once i found that and once i realized that if i write the character first off it's making that connection from hand to brain it's it's extra repetition but knowing that i now knew the tones of the word without question because of the character um it was so beneficial and once i started that my chinese learning just ramped up right uh or my mandarin learning i know that people get mad when you call it chinese but mandarin chinese learning um just ramped up tremendously and of course that's going incredible and then i i i just had a fall i have an electric scooter i was riding it and um man i just fell on it. i mean it just, things happen life happens right yeah. I, I broke my elbow uh and i broke the radial head of my elbow which is also uh apparently from what i understand part of what control which i can move it a little bit now but it's part of what controls the movement in your hand and arm all the way down uh so then so then i couldn't write um and i'm thinking oh my god i'm making so much progress with chinese here um learning the tones and the pronunciation and how to write it and how to um and learning how to write it obviously helps me with learning how to read it uh man it was just so devastating and so i thought i've, I've got to do something uh i've got to be able to 
try and change what I'm doing. Um, in in my daily life, I'm for the most part ambidextrous. I can do pretty much just about anything left or right handed. I, I can write left handed, but I can't do. I tried to write Chinese left handed, but I can't. It's just so much more of a uh, of a thing, you know. And so uh, I had to just completely pivot what I was doing because I didn't want to not study Mandarin for the few months that I was injured, or however long I'm injured. I know that I'm going to be in this sling for another four weeks. Um, and I do start physical therapy soon. So maybe, but also I didn't want to do anything where I was like, well, it feels okay. Let me do it. And then I go back to the doctor and he's like, oh God, you're not healing at all. And it's like, oh God, I wonder why. So I knew that I had to make a pivot in order to be able to maintain, um, any kind of Chinese. And so, yeah, I, I started looking for kind of additional methods. Um, that would help me. I, I come from a very heavily age at influenced like immersion that's that's when i really got into the thick of language learning um when i was trying to learn japanese and I, i'm not saying that method doesn't work because i think any method will work if you just do it <laughs> um but as far as what i'm comfortable with and what i love um i had found what was actually working and, and made me feel like i was making progress and then you know you snap your arm in half and here we are mm -hmm. right and <clears throat> I guess was, because I know in your video you had mentioned, um, you know, it wasn't like, how did you word it? I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you said no. something about like, this hasn't been like a super negative experience. I've just had to adjust. So can mm. you kind of explain like really that realization of, oh, wow, mm. like I was making so much progress and I and now I, I can't do that anymore. Like, how did you, I guess, really like come to terms with those feelings or describe that? So the, 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 the amazing thing is, is uh, I use uh, Goo Chinese pretty heavily, um, which is a, a reading app. Um, it's it's uh, everything is curated for that app. The words are spaced properly, and I know that Chinese doesn't have spacing, but when you're learning, it's very helpful because sometimes the end of one word and the beginning of another, if they were together, could be a different word. You know, like just having that spacing uh, helps with that. But anyway, and then there's translations and stuff like that. So everything's there. But what I noticed is, is while reading, A, I could read so much more than I could before. Um, obviously, because I've learned, you know, several hundred characters that I can write from memory. So if I can recall them, I'm going to recognize them. Um, but the other thing I noticed is too, it really put into kind of testing the Mandarin blueprint method. So if I come across a word I don't know when I'm reading Du Chinese, I say, okay, well, let me break this character down the way that they would break it down. And I've found that, you know, it, it's worked. Now, I don't know all of the, what they call props, which are the components or the radicals. I know that people call them many different things. Um, so if it's a radical that I don't know, I, I'm so stuck in radical because of Japanese, but I think it's technically component. But the, the radical or components, um, if I don't know it, I don't stress about it because I know that when I get back to Mandarin Blueprint Method, I'll be able to make my way through it. Um, but I mean, a lot of times, even just when, within the first several hundred characters they teach you, like, you know that. So there's been a whole lot of words that I have went to. Now, I don't know if I could write them from memory per se, because I've not practiced them. I think a lot of me being able to write them is also repetition. But as far as being able to recognize them, it's not like, oh, what was that again? It's, oh, I made a story for that. And that's how they teach you. It's, it's through like a story. It's creating a mnemonic, but instead of using Heisig's yeah. method, you're creating your own mnemonic. So it's very relatable to you, which makes it easier to understand of course um but i've been able to do that with duchenne and it's because of this method so while i can't practice the handwriting stuff it's made me realize how effective that method is in other things because i can take that method and even though i can't write i can apply the mnemonic system that they've helped me create in my head because it's specific to me the letters are related to people i know uh, locations that I know. I know this is going to sound like I'm an absolute insane person when I say this, and that's what's beautiful about the method, but uh, people I know, locations I know, and props that are relative to me. You know, uh, my Blue Yeti microphone may be a prop, and it's because I'm used to sitting here looking at that. Like, so you, everything's created to your own specific thing, um, and it's, so I know that the method is incredible, and now, you know, even though I can't write, I'm getting more reading practice in and from where I don't have to think about the characters, it's made me realize that, man, I can read a whole lot because there's a lot of characters that I look at and it's just internalized and it's because of this. So it's it's actually been kind of 
I hate to say rewarding. I would totally rather not break my arm, but it's also put in perspective of how far I've come uh, after adapting to something and saying, oh, wow, like I can read this sentence and it's not me having to sound it out and be like, well, that means water. That means glass. Okay. That means poor. Okay. This is, uh, no, it's just boom, 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 boom. And it's, I know what it is. And it's, it's, uh, it, it's been rewarding. We'll take the positives out of the negative. That's what we'll do. We'll we'll take the positive situations out of the negative and say, hey, you know what? I can look at this and I can read it. And that's actually pretty good. Um, I stopped reading the beginner stories. I'm up to the elementary stories. And even that's going, it's not as much stopping as I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's because of doing that. So it's put in perspective at how comfortable I've gotten. Obviously, still, there's always room to expand. But yeah, how comfortable I've gotten with what I've done and just appreciating where I was two months ago versus where I am now. Wow, I love that. So if you had not broken your arm, do you think you would have, I guess, because it, it sounds like right now you're being a lot more independent and you're, mm-hmm. even though, you know, you learned a lot while you were doing like really within that um, blueprint method, you Mm. would have continued sticking with it had it not been for your arm that kind of forced you out of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I think, yeah, it's basically going forward. Once my arm is healed, I'm going to do Mandarin blueprint still, but I think I'm not going to try to do as much. I I think I'm going to try to space it out a little bit and do because i mean i i mean i i love it i i can't explain to it i know people complain because it it is it is kind of expensive but listen i i've always it's the same thing i feel about a restaurant if the food is good i'll pay yeah like i don't mind to pay if it's good um and that's how i feel about this method i'm very passionate about it i, I wish they would sponsor me or something but uh but i i love it and, and so i think um I'm going to do it, but I'm going to, I'm going to probably try to limit because I was doing it like three or four hours a day, um, just going through characters and really just doing that. And I think what I'll do is I'll probably still go through the characters, but maybe cut down on the amount of repetition I'm writing stuff. Um, Cause I mean, I would write character. I mean, I, I mean, I literally have like, I would just go over and over and over. Like I have, um, and this is, I have different notebooks for different things, but I, I mean, it's just, I literally write like all the time like i absolutely love uh well it's harder to turn the pages here i've got like nine or ten pages full of just writing in there um and so i'll probably cut down on the repetitions and i'm okay with that because i know that that method's working because of now what i've experienced while reading Mm -hmm. so yeah it's definitely i had to change the way that i study but now it's changed the way that i'll go forward because of seeing whoa this is awesome i can read this and I know it's because of this. So let's 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 still do that to keep adding the the props and the components to it. And do a couple of characters, but then let's get out there and get that real world interaction, uh, interaction, whatever you want to call it. Immersion, I guess, would be the correct word there. But yeah. What would you say right now to language learners who are facing like a similar bodily injury that has that kind of timeline, but they can't do anything about it right now and they feel discouraged? So uh, there's always there's always uh, there's always a way to do something. Thing. Um, there's on YouTube, you can look it up. There's a guy who was deaf and learned Mandarin and could speak oh. it with correct tones. Oh. Um, so whatever's inhibiting your you from going forward, um, there's always somewhere that you can go. Um, it may take a little bit to, to kind of try to find that path because I think that's the biggest thing is getting out of the comfort zone of, and especially with study and language, it, it's already so daunting and it's already so hard. Um, and it's, and, and, and of course with imposter syndrome and stuff like that as well. And so don't compare yourself to others and, and say, well, they made it here. Cause you know, again, with YouTube, you know, just as well as I do and anybody, I mean, most of the time, all you're seeing is just what people want you to see. Uh, you know, you don't see the, you know, you, you, you don't see the, uh, 200 characters that I've scribbled out that I've wrote wrong. Um, and I, I, I try to be open about what I do. And I know that you do too. There's, there, there are a lot of language learners that are very open about what they do, but I think a lot of people can still just be like, well, it's not that bad. I want to be as good as this person or that person. So don't compare yourself to others. Um, and just enjoy the journey. Like just enjoy it. Try to find something that you enjoy. I know that that's kind of a redundant thing, but like there's always somewhere you can go and then step back and say, you know, if you have to change it because of something you're going through and say, Hey, I've come a long way because before I started doing this, I would be reading this in pinion, right? I wouldn't be reading the characters like that kind of thing. Um, and that's obviously 
depending on your target language, that's a whole different concept. You know, um, reading isn't going to be a struggle for you in Spanish because uh, it's phonetic and you can see it. But maybe there's something else that you struggle with. It's just um, it's just just try to find something that's enjoyable and, and, and also take into consideration at what you're doing and how you may have been doing in that same situation a few months before your injury just to see how far you've come searching around using a combination it sounds of going on the internet maybe looking around for different ways of how people have learned their own languages but also really mm -hmm. just analyzing right where like what yeah. kind of skill have i been working on before mm -hmm. how can i kind of pivot that and use what i've already learned up to that point before my injury yeah. into to infuse like another skill just for the time being because we can always there's always joy to be found and i i really like that um, yeah and you know you know like let's say for example you can't write and let's say that you, I don't know, let's say that you don't have the internet for some reason, right? Like, I know that's not an injury, but I mean, that's also crippling in a way. Oh, oh yeah. So, so let's say you don't have the internet and you're like, okay, I need to, I need to practice. I mean, depending on the language, maybe there's a restaurant nearby. Just go talk to somebody for a minute. Like, there's always ways that you can do it. Of course, part of it's comfort zone. And I, I understand anxiety more than uh, I may appear more outgoing than I am, but I'm very, I am very introverted. So I, I definitely get it. But, but it just as an example, right? It, it's, there's always somewhere you can go to work on something. You know, if you're in an area that doesn't have any speakers, jump, jump on Omegle. Like you can jump on Omegle and have your camera covered. You know, you don't have to be like, there's, there's always somewhere you can go. So yeah, it's not always so black and white, all or nothing. Right. Even though yeah. I know like at the very beginning, it can kind of seem like that. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah no, I think that's beautiful. Um, great. Where can others learn more about you and find you? Yeah, um, I have a YouTube channel uh, and I have Twitter. I have, I have a Facebook account, but I don't upload to I think I'm going to start uploading to it. But uh, any social media is just at Seabolt Speaks. Um, and that's uh, language. And recently I've actually filmed three videos, but uh, I'm from just deep heart of Appalachia. And uh, I've started filming stuff because I want to show people the culture and stuff around here. Um, because my my channel is very much language. I've always said it's language and culture. It's just been way more heavy on the language. Of course, I've show, I've done videos. You know, when I went to Kenya or Mexico and stuff like that. But I want to show the culture around here. I think there's such a negative stigma on Appalachia. I want to kind of show what it's like too. So at Seabolt speaks across the board, YouTube, Twitter, or X or whatever, Facebook and uh, Instagram and all that stuff. And yeah, that's where I'm at. Mm -hmm. um Thank you so much for for your time and explaining everything to us. Absolutely. Yeah, I hope somebody finds use out of this. It's such a unique situation, I think. <laughs> uh, but it's something that I had to put in perspective to myself of, you broke your arm and now literally yeah. the one core method you use to learn languages is now gone for a minute. So what are we going to do? And I was like, Man, I wonder, if, I wonder if anybody else has felt that. So yeah, absolutely. Go check him out. He has a lot of great um, videos documenting his progress as well with other languages, but also some really great travel videos. So awesome. hopefully you will see it over there.